The thing I remember about growing up the most is rugby was a, was a blessing because we had a farm that was a lot of broke a hilly country and we milked cows just for a living in the bottom of it so we'd milk the cows early in the morning and then go out and do things on the farm you know or the fencing or and sort of when I was about 16 or 17 I think he bought another 300 acres of bush rough country next door to it and so that was our occupation for a long part of the summer so was you know, get the milking done and then go and cut scrub and all those sort of things. Why did that teach you? It taught us hard work. It taught us that, uh, you know, to try and set targets how far we can get, you know, in, in each day and that sort of thing and scrub. And so rugby was a way out. You know, you used to pray for rugby to come round because you could have all the time off you like as long as it was with rugby. But as kids, I can always remember, you know, we followed, Stan was probably more so than me, he followed the All Blacks and idolised them. Stan could name every All Black in the 49 team, pick up a photo and name the whole lot of them. And we did things that the All Blacks started, like Bob Scott said, every player should be able to kick with both feet. And we'd be out in the paddocks kicking with our left foot, you know, just because Bob Scott said so. You know. So it was, it was a competitive sort of a thing, but it was all based around farming and hard work. I was never one to take the jersey to bed and all that sort of thing. A lot, a lot of them put it on and slept in it and all this sort of thing. I wasn't that, it was on the field. That, and I would never wear an all black jersey at training. And there was all blacks, you know, they'd have their, been all blacks for a long time. They always wear an all black jersey at training. I thought, Geez, I was disgusted with it. You know, I thought that's not on. You you only wear that on the bloody when you're playing for your country. You don't train in the bloody thing. It was when you put the jersey on. To me, that was the. I'm um, now, and uh, every time you go to put that jersey on, right through my career, it was always. You don't come second in this one, boy. I always said, you know, the more you practice, the better you are. Yeah, there was a lot of players who annoyed you as All Blacks because they wouldn't train hard or they wouldn't be serious about it. And and especially on the long tours, you know, you'd get a long tour because we'd be away for four or five, nearly five months on one trip I went on. And, and you know, you get to stages where they everything just becomes routine and they and they don't do anything with any in you know any effort or anything like that they just go through the motions and, and those sort of fellows would upset me and and the ones that don't try because you know once you're an all black you're playing for your country and you if a selector told you to buddy run 100 miles you'd run 100 miles so just even in life and, and, and as a father i mean do you expect people to put the effort in oh of course you do yeah yeah you like and if no matter what you do Everyone's different, whether it's with your family, you know, you know, and that sort of thing. And I wasn't a great father because all my early career, I, you know, we had a young family when, you know, the, I was only 21 or 22 when I had my first child. And Verna was mum, dad and everything a lot of the time, but they were always looked after and always got, you know, got to training and played. And you encouraged them. And I can always remember Glenn, he'd come back, he's a schoolboy, you know, like, Colin me just and he playing on the wing and I thought, oh. but I never ever said anything about it. I said, long as you enjoy it, you know, you go out and play your best and enjoy it, and eventually come round to being a forward and had a great career. One of my favourite stories that you, you told me was was when you came up against Keith Murdoch in the in the was it the trials? Yeah, in nineteen sixty, yeah. Well, I'd been in the All Blacks a long time then, and you know, the new fellows come along and. And rightly so, they have the older ones on. It was no different to me. It was when you were playing against, the, you know, the gun players. You have them on, and uh, and uh, I'll never forget it. They had two teams, uh, possible probables, and it was the final trial to go to South Africa in 
South Africa in 70, but he was standing at four in the line out and he was just pulling my arm away. Well, you know, I'd been in the All Blacks for a long time and used to just tell these young fellows, hey, I wouldn't do that again if I was you. <laughs> He'd just look at me and so I ended up uh, telling him I'd knock his bloody head off if he did that again. He'd just look at me and he'd say, have a go. <laughs> and it wasn't the, re the, the reply I wanted, you know, <laughs> sort of thing. I thought I'd talk my way out of it. I had to wait till nearly the end of the game and I let him have a... And I'll never forget his reaction, you know. He, he, I thought I'd put him, uh, you know, he'd be down, but... I had broken knuckles and all sorts of things. He he reeled back and shook his head, and I, I, just, I know there was three or four minutes to go. That clock at the Athletic Park down the far corner, I'm watching that. So you call the team in and make out a good captain, and I give him a lecture, and I said I'd had a message from the selectors, and you used to get messages in trials, they'd wander up and down the sideline, talk bullshit, you know. So. And so I said, the message is they want to see the wingers in the centre running with the ball more. And, um, you know, just spin it around. We've only got four minutes to go. They want to see more of the wingers. And, and I said, no one has to kick it out. Don't you kick it out. <laughs> I didn't want to get back to a line out, just think. And I'll never forget the relief you get when the final whistle goes and you look up and this Murdoch's coming straight towards me. And, you know, those beetle brows he had. <laughs> Yeah, I said to the fellas, you better stay close here. It might be a bit of trouble. All these stories come flooding back. Well, he come up to me and he put his hand out. I grabbed it and I shook the hell out of it. And he said to me, your king hit is not working. <laughs> <laughs> and quick as a flash, I said to him, it was just a warning. <laughs> I still think it's the great game, you know, and we still admire our McCaws and the Carters and, the, you know, the great players and... Uh, you know, I'm a white lock fan now, and or, or, you know, that's just because he's a good lock and a good player. But the game's changed so much. They've got bigger. They've got, uh, I presume they're stronger. They tell us they are. And they're all gymnasium trained now. Well, see, I never went to a gymnasium in my life. So it, it's a different game, and they build them up to, you know, and they are. They're, they're real supermen. So this is a question I've asked everyone and they dared me to ask you, was um, I asked people, can they remember the last time they cried? No, I can't. Uh, it would be when I was a kid, I suppose, somewhere along the line, but I've, I'm not one, not an emotional person, and so I... No, I can't remember when I last cried. I suppose when I had rheumatic fever and the doctor wouldn't let me out of bed. I was in bed for six or eight weeks or something and he kept me, I might have cried when he said, you've got to have another two weeks in there or something, but I'd have been seven or eight then. <laughs> Where do you find happiness? Oh, happiness at this stage of life. Having a few beers with your mates and talking rubbish and... I do feel that you, you've got to enjoy things. You know, I do a fair bit of public speaking and I do a hell of a lot for charities. And I often say to Vern, I often sit there and say, why the hell am I doing this? And then after it's all over, you think, well, that was good, that good for the Cancer Society or for the IHC or for the Rugby Foundation. You know, that got them a few bob. And after it's all over, you say to yourself, well, I wasn't too bad. You meet a lot of new people and you have a good time and drink too much beer and all those things go with it. What is it about particularly that you love so much? Well, it? I think it's just uh, the peace. As I say to people, we've got no traffic lights here. We've got... Uh, uh, and you, you know a big percentage of the people. The younger ones now I don't know, but it's all g'day pine tree or that's column meads, you know, they yell out to you. And, and, and it's it's just nice to be in Tikawoody and be Colin Meads rather than the All Black. You go to the club and no one shouts you any beers, you've got to buy your own or, or shout them. You go to Auckland, everyone's shouting you here. Well, most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant.